If you're impacted by a decision, you're a stakeholder. just waiting for someone to come along and say, what do you think? What do you think about the place that you live? Personally, I felt like it gave me a voice, or it gave, that's what it should give all of us. I really just think it made them better citizens. What I got out of it is that we should listen to kids more often. And there's already tagging, as you can see on the side. I guess I never really realized how important community outreach was. And after this class, after Photo Voice, it's highly important. right off the Pacific Ocean. 65 miles northwest of Los Angeles and 14 miles east of Ventura lies the city of Santa Paula, a small town of 30,000 people, once known for oil, surrounding agriculture, now makes this area the citrus capital of the world. In September of 2011, the city hired city planning students at Cal Poly State University San Luis Obispo to update the Santa Paula's downtown plan, a guide for the city's future growth. We've been working on it for about six months. There's 19 of us and two instructors. You know, it's an old historic downtown and it suffered from some of the things that other downtowns have, which is people sort of moving out to the edges, shopping elsewhere. Hi, I'm Scott Black. And I'm Josh Gray. Ours is called the Street of Emptiness. A lot of cities would really love to have the physical core like that, an historic old core. The caption under this one is potentially beautiful because it is potentially beautiful. I do like Santa Paula and it has potential. They really want to be careful about where the physical atmosphere there goes in the future. They want to keep that small town feeling. The city council from the very beginning has been very uh, excited about Cal Poly being involved in their, in their community. Both uh, Professor Main and myself have a deep interest in community involvement and getting people who normally don't come to the uh, table to participate. The first picture we're going to talk about is right here is the lodge. The Boy Scouts to use it to have meetings there, but it's not really, really being used right now. We want to preserve it. If you're going to represent a city and you're going to come and you live in a different city and you're going to come to my city and change my city, build my city, change its traffic flow or where we live or how we live, wouldn't it be nice to know what we think, what we like and what we don't like, what's bothering us or what's working well? We're just trying to say that we should like probably have like some activities there for kids. Because inadvertently, you could actually miss the most important thing and you could pick a peripheral change. I'm Carla Yamas and our board is titled Change because it's what we want to change in Santa Paula. We put a picture of our new track. We like it, but what we don't like about it is that it's not for the community except for Tuesdays and Thursdays. We just want that change. We want our track to be open for everyone because our parents and the community help pay for everything. Right here we have a, a monument dedicated to the people that worked in the fields and that's showing that we care about our heritage. And this is the youth of the community and they also have a vision and they also have their own thoughts. So by reaching out to the youth of the community, community that we're working with, we get to see a different you know, aspect. And now you can tell a story about how a community affects a group of people, not just one person. In updating the downtown plan, the university students' primary concern was finding out what the community wanted. To help the university students reach out to Santa Paula High School students, Stride, a research center at Cal Poly, funded the Photo Voice project at the Santa Paula High School. This project really wouldn't have been possible without Stride and, and Dr. McDermott's support. So a couple of years ago, I met with her interested in public health and the relationship between public health and planning, and having heard about Photo Voice as an opportunity to explore that. The built environment is, is now becoming very much on the, uh, the forefront of uh, the public health and the medical community. The environment definitely affects health um, 
and our health affects the environment. There's nothing that, that can happen in a built city that doesn't impact your ability to be mobile. What are some of the things they really love about the community? What are things they, they would like to change? And how does that relate to their health? And they're really unhealthy. I don't think anyone wants to go there. Do you guys want to? No. I don't think so. We try to do as much outreach as we can for these planning labs, and we thought Photo Voice would be a great way to get kids, high school students, involved in telling us what they want. Basically giving an outlook on what it looks like from somebody looking in. Because the community also has a voice. How do you become aware of the, the issues and the perspective of the residents? And Photo Voice can become a great tool for that. We distributed the project to 42 students with the help of uh, Mrs. Lamb, she's right here in the audience if you want to wave. It was finding the right partner, Nicola Lamb and Santa Paula High School, that led the project to be finished. Keith Woodcock came down and talked to me first about it. They wanted to talk to different uh, age groups about what they felt Santa Paula is, you know, how amazing it is and what could be improved. Well, initially I thought it was going to be working on narrative writing, which as an English teacher, I was all about that. So we did some practicing with narrative writing. We wrote about um, where I'm from, just some creative, you know, kind of get them in the mood for, for that, a scar story, you know, telling the story of a scar. Um, but then it turned out to be more than that, especially once we started looking at their photographs. The students of Santa Paula actually went out to their city and they were told to, you know, take photos of things they liked about Santa Paula, things that they didn't like. The daycare is very important because when the parents are working, both of them, because usually they're, they both have to work, the kids need a place to be safe. So we just gave the kids these cameras and told them like, you know what, just show us Santa Paula t in your eyes. The photographs that they took for this project just started really un unfolding and they wanted to tell the story of what they felt their town could be. I focused on the streets of Santa Paula. Some of our streets are terribly destroyed. As you can see, there's holes and cracks. And I think that's not very safe for our community because people who try to like be active around town, like go on bike rides or ride their scooters or jog can get really hurt by these. We need to get out to get active so we won't be stuck at home doing nothing, but you can't stay long at your parks because these restrooms are really unsanitary and as you can see this one is out of order so it's pointless you can't even go. I was very impressed by how they communicated their ideas and how articulate they were and the photos were amazing you could tell there was artistic talent too. And on this picture we have a bent fence that's right next to the Blanchard Elementary School and it's right next to the playground where the little kids play so if they, if they were to get into this fence, they could, uh, they could cut themselves really bad. We're going to be presenting to the council our, our main strategies, what is driving those strategies, and doing a case study of saying this idea has worked in the following communities and sharing that. In March of 2012, Cal Poly professors and their university students finished the Santa Paula downtown plan. Using the Santa Paula High School students' proposals, Cal Poly University planning students incorporated the high school students' ideas into their designs to enhance Santa Paula's downtown area. Collectively, the ideas, concepts, and designs will lead to improved city parks and streets, encouraging everyone to become more active. What we're doing with this information is that in our uh, downtown improvement plan, we're having a section called Community Outreach. And so their photos and their narratives are going to be part of the document itself that is going to be delivered to the city council. So it's going to be memorialized in record through our plan. The city, if they take these suggestions, I think it could make a huge difference. These students got to live civic engagement. And some of the kids even kind of mentioned that they, how do you get on the city council? What do they have to do? So. Our town just usually doesn't get the recognition it probably should, and that's what I think this project did for us. It kind of gave them that confidence in themselves that their opinion matters, that they are in fact citizens of this town, and that they have a voice, and that they should start saying, hey, we need to change this, we want to do something different. Finding the touchstone of a community really opens up doors. And the touchstone in Santa Paula is its youth. I would recommend this project to other schools because that way the students who don't get out much can go out and see the city how it really is. Not just like, oh, look right there's Main Street or right there's the high school. But they can actually see what's wrong and what's good about the city and then they can learn from it and show others and the city can be improved.
call the meetings in order for uh, March 5th, 2012.